In the next section, we'll review several USMLE type questions that cover the topics of transporters, body fluids, receptors, neurophysiology, the autonomic nervous system, muscle, and reflexes. In this section, we'll cover several questions covering the topics of cellular physiology, neurophysiology, autonomic, and muscle physiology. Question 22. A 24-year-old man dies suddenly. At autopsy, there's evidence for cocaine abuse, but no evidence of gross or microscopic structural alterations of the heart. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the cardiac malfunction in this man? A. Blockade of calcium channels. B. Blockade of dopamine synthesis. C. Potentiation of norepinephrine and blocking of its presynaptic uptake. D. Potentiation of serotonin at postsynaptic sites in the AV node. Or E. Stroke due to malignant hypertension. The correct answer here is C. Potentiation of norepinephrine and blocking of its presynaptic uptake. Cocaine blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine at the synaptic cleft. This can cause several deleterious effects of the heart, most commonly either a tachyarrhythmia or vasospasm. Question 23. During which phase of the ventricular action potential shown does norepinephrine influence the influx of calcium? A, B, C, D, or E? The correct answer here is C. C corresponds to the protracted positive plateau potential found in ventricular action potentials, and this is due to the opening of voltage-gated, long-lasting calcium channels known as the L-type calcium channel. Question 24. During the contraction of strided muscle, the thick and thin filaments alter their relationship with each other, and the sarcomere shortens. Which of the following bands is most likely to contain, excuse me, to maintain a constant length during muscle contraction? A, the A band, B, the H band, C, the I disc, or D, the M disc? The correct answer here is A. Remember that A only corresponds to the length of the thick filament, and that doesn't change. The A band has no correspondence to the amount of overlap between any of the bands in the sarcomere. Question 25. A series of experiments is performed to determine the mechanism by which a pharmacologic agent traverses cell membranes and accumulates within target cells. The rate of transport depends on the concentration of the drug only. When the extracellular concentration of the agent exceeds 10 millimolar, no further increase in the rate of uptake is observed. Structurally similar compounds pass through the cell membrane, but at a lower rate. Wabane, an inhibitor of the sodium-potassium ATPase, fails to inhibit transport. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism by which this agent enters cells? A. Antiport. B. Facilitated diffusion. C. Ion-gated coupling. D. Simple diffusion. Or E. Symport. The key to answering a question such as this, which is quite long and offers many details, is to deconstruct the question and to go through it bit by bit. Let's see what they're actually telling us in this question. Early in the question, they tell us that the rate of transport depends on the concentration of the drug only. This is not a particularly helpful statement since this is true for virtually all forms of transport. But importantly, the next statement tells us that when the extracellular concentration exceeds a certain amount, no further increase in the rate of uptake is observed. This tells us that the process is saturable. And when a process is saturable, that means that it must be mediated via some protein, which itself is saturable in terms of how rapidly it can move this substance. So right away, that eliminates answers such as D, which would be simple diffusion. The next statement also might be helpful if we didn't have the previous statement, and that is that structurally similar compounds pass through the cell mem membrane, but at a lower rate. This gives us some inkling that this is an inhibitable process. And if it's inhibitable, that means that a protein is mediating its transport port. Well, we knew that from the previous statement, so this is not a particularly useful statement in the context of what we already knew about the process. Finally, the last statement, the last factual statement, gives us the answer. Wabane, which inhibits the sodium ATPase, sodium potassium ATPase, fails to inhibit transport. This suggests that this process is not dependent on the splitting of ATP, 
and therefore is not an active transport process. So the only answer that matches the criteria of being a passive process that requires the use of some protein would be B, facilitated diffusion. Question 26. A 25-year-old woman at 32 weeks gestation begins taking a drug to delay the onset of preterm labor. After the first dose, she notices tremulousness in her hands. Which of the following types of receptors is most likely to be involved in this effect? A. Alpha-1 adrenergic. B. Beta-2 adrenergic. C. Dopaminergic D1. D. Muscarinic M1 or E. NMDA. Well, to answer this question correctly, one has to recognize what type of receptor would one, type, would one want to activate to delay preterm labor. As we discussed earlier, beta-2 receptors are found on smooth muscle in the uterus, and when activated, they relax smooth muscle. In addition, any form of beta stimulation will cause tremulousness in any patient who receives such a compound. So here we have a combination of both where we can recognize what pharmacology needs to be activated, beta-2, and what pharmacology can lead to the side effect described here, any form of beta agonist. So the answer here would be B, beta-2 adrenergic. Question 27. A 23-year-old woman is scheduled to undergo surgical repair of an aortic malformation. A ganglionic blocking agent is administered before the procedure to decrease her blood pressure. The hypotension achieved by binding of the drug at which of the following receptors? A. Alpha-1 adrenergic. B. Alpha-2 adrenergic. C. Beta-1 adrenergic. D. Beta-2 adrenergic. E. Muscarinic or F. Nicotinic. Well, the question here actually gives you a very strong clue as to the nature of the compound that's being utilized. They tell you that a ganglionic blocking agent will be administered. Well, we know already that the ganglia across all of the autonomic nervous system, whether it's a sympathetic or parasympathetic ganglion, they all use nicotinic receptor activation. That is acetylcholine binding to a nicotinic receptor. And that directly points us at the correct answer here, which is F. This also points out an important phenomenon, and that is a ganglionic blocking agent will block the activity of all of the autonomic nervous system and therefore the default position of the vascular system is one of low blood pressure. So in this particular case the blood pressure is maintained low initially by the use of this agent and then the physician administering the anesthesia can then alter the blood pressure higher as needed for surgical purposes. <clears throat> Question 28. T-tubules enhance which of the following processes in striated muscle cells? A. Deliver the action potential to the interior of the myocytes. B. Reinforcement of the cell membrane for the attachment of myofibrils. C. Scavenging of non-hydrolyzed neurotransmitter to, to terminate contraction. F. Storage of higher concentrations of intracellular calcium to uniformly initiate contractions. E. Structural stabilization of the postsynaptic membrane at the neuromuscular junction. All the role of T-tubules. Their job is to bring the action potential down into the interior of these very, very large skeletal muscle cells. This is because it's the mechanical interaction between the sodium channels involved in the generation of the action potential and the ryanidine receptor that is necessary for the release of calcium. So the correct answer here is A, deliver of the action potential to the interior of the myocytes. Question 29. Activation of T lymphocytes is initiated when the processed antigen binds to the T lymphocyte receptor on the cell membrane and phospholipase C is activated. This results in production of which of the following components of signal transduction? A. Cyclic AMP, B. Cyclic GMP, C. Diacylglycerol, or D. Interleukin-2. The correct answer here is dependent on our knowledge of the G sub Q pathway. Recall the G sub Q pathway will activate phospholipase C to split PIP2 into IP3 and DAG. 
DAG is diisoglycerol, and that is the correct answer here, C, diisoglycerol. Question 30. A fluorescent molecule of 2,000 Daltons is microinjected into a single cell of an epithelial layer. When looked at under a fluorescence microscope, the molecule remains confined to that cell. But when a fluorescent molecule of 800 Daltons is injected, it quickly appears in adjacent cells. Which is responsible for the spread of the molecule? A. Desmosomes B. Focal contacts C. Gap junctions or D. Tight junctions or zonula occludens The correct answer here is gap junctions. This helps define what a gap junction is. That is, the question itself tells us precisely what gap junctions do. When a large molecule is injected into a cell, it is retained within that cell. But when a small molecule is injected, it then diffuses to enter adjacent cells. By definition, this is what a gap junction does. It allows small molecules to traverse between one cell and another. Question 31. Which of the following is responsible for the edema that results from the use of a venous occlusive tourniquet? A. Decreased interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure. B. Increased mean capillary hydrostatic pressure. C. Increased plasma oncotic pressure. Or D. Increased capillary reflection coefficient for plasma proteins. Venous occlusive tourniquet is used. The rationale behind this is to impair the outflow of blood from the vascular system to that particular limb. When that happens, the hydrostatic pressure inside those capillaries increases. This makes the veins more visible and easier to draw blood from. But if that tourniquet is left on for too long, edema will ensue. And the edema is caused by that increase in hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries or an increase in P sub C. For this reason, the correct answer is B, increased mean capillary hydrostatic pressure. Question 32. A 30-year-old man develops cold cyanotic fingers while walking his dog on a cold night. Which of the following mechanisms most likely contributed to this phenomenon? A. Decreased parasympathetic activity. B. Hypophysial release of ADH, which is vasopressin. C. Increased sympathetic activity. D. Inhibition of the renin-angiotensin system. E. Mast cell release of histamine. F. Platelet release of serotonin. You might recognize this phenomenon as Raynaud's phenomenon. And Raynaud's phenomenon is caused by increased sympathetic activity for reasons that are not well understood that causes vasospasm. So for this reason, the correct answer is C. It's important to also point out why the correct answer is not A. It might be tempting to list this as an answer because decreased sympathetic activity might be thought to be responsible for increased sympathetic tone causing vasospasm. But remember, there is no parasympathetic innervation of the vasculature. The vasculature only has sympathetic innervation, and when this is overdriven, this causes Raynaud's phenomenon. Question 33. A 50-year-old man with anginal pain takes nitroglycerin. The pain is rapidly relieved because of A, inhibition of phospholipase C activity, B, stimulation of cyclic AMP formation, C, stimulation of cyclic GMP formation, D, stimulation of inositol 145 triphosphate formation, or E, stimulation of the protein kinase C activity. Well, recall the mechanism of action of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin, like all nitrates, will ultimately yield the production of nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, as was discussed previously, will bind and activate soluble guanylate cyclase, and this will produce cyclic GMP, ultimately leading to smooth muscle relaxation. So for this reason, the correct answer is C, stimulation of cyclic GMP formation. Question 34. Which of the following best describes the movement of sodium and potassium during one cycle of the sodium-potassium pump? A. Two molecules of sodium in and two molecules of potassium out. B. Two molecules of sodium in and three molecules of potassium out. C. Three molecules of sodium in and two molecules of potassium out. D. Two molecules of sodium out and two molecules of potassium in. Or E. Three molecules of sodium out 
and two molecules of potassium in. This question simply asks you to understand or remember the definition of the sodium potassium ATPase. In this case, the correct answer is E, three molecules of sodium out for every two molecules of potassium brought in. Question 35. During an experimental study of the mechanisms of nerve conduction, a researcher isolates a nerve and measures its membrane potential distal to a site of electrical stimulation. The resting potential of the nerve is negative 90 millivolts. The following membrane potentials are recorded at points after stimulation. The data are shown below. The change in membrane potential from resting potential occurring between 0.5 and one milliseconds is likely due to the increased permeability of which of the following ions? A, calcium, B, chloride, C, potassium, D, sodium, or E, phosphate. The key to answering a question such as this, which provides tabular data and is long and slightly complicated, is to look at the data and to see whether or not you can graph this in a simple graph on your own. Oftentimes, visualization of the graph gives you much more uh, ability to recognize a pattern than simply looking at the data in tabular format. My suggestion would be to plot these data out, and when you do this, you'll observe that these data describe the voltage changes during an action potential. The question is asking what, is, what ion is responsible for the voltage change between half a millisecond and one millisecond, and that is during the change in voltage from positive 25 to negative 100. This corresponds to the downslope of an action potential, and this downslope is generated by the outflow of potassium. So the correct answer here is C. Question 36. The action potential in excitable cells is a result of which of the following? A. Energy-driven membrane pumps. B, ionic equilibrium potential, C, voltage-dependent membrane ionic conductances, or D, transmembrane concentration gradients. The correct answer here is C, voltage-dependent membrane ionic conductances. The reason is, the only reason excitable cells are excitable is because they have voltage-gated sodium channels. These channels don't exist on any other cells other than skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, as well as neurons. The other three answers, the energy-driven ionic membrane pumps, ionic equilibrium potentials, and transmembrane concentration gradients exist in all cell types, whether or not they are excitable. Question 37. A 21-year-old man has a sudden onset of fever, sweating, cyanosis, tachycardia, tachypnea, unstable blood pressure, and muscle rigidity after administration of halothane and succinylcholine for an appendectomy. An abnormality in which of the following is the most likely cause of this reaction? A. Calcium releasing channels. B. Carnitine palmitoyl transferase. C. Mitochondrial ATPase. D. Sodium potassium ATPase. Or E. Phosphorylase beta kinase. The correct answer to this question depends on our knowledge or recognition of what this clinical situation is. This situation is known as malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is thought to be due to a mutation in the ryanidine receptor, which is the receptor that releases calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This often happens in the setting of halothane and succinylcholine used for anesthesia. For these reasons, the correct answer is A, calcium releasing channels, again, otherwise known as the ryanidine receptors. Question 38. A 68-year-old man with benign prostatic hypertrophy starts taking terazosin. Which of the following changes is most likely in second messenger levels in the cells affected by this treatment? A. Decrease in cyclic AMP. B. Decrease in cyclic GMP. C. Decrease in IP3. D. Increase in cyclic AMP. E, increase in cyclic GMP, or F, increase in IP3. This concludes the section on cellular and neurophysiology. That concludes this review of USMLE type questions covering the topics of body fluids, transporters, receptors, 
neurophysiology, autonomic physiology, muscle physiology, and reflexes. This also concludes our section of cellular physiology.